Hello again folks and welcome back. So now that our character can equip her bow, it's in her hand, she's running around, now we need to set up her ability to fire it. So let's do that now. So the first thing we need to do in order to fire an arrow is actually have an arrow to fire. So I'm going to find my base interactable item and I'm going to create another child blueprint of it for my wood arrow underscore bp. I'm going to open that up and I'm going to replace the item mesh with a cube. This is basically going to be my arrow the, the <laughs> for now at least until I find one. So this will work fine for me. Um, you can go to open game art and probably find a good mesh or if you're a 3d modeler you could probably just make one but this is going to work for me for now so once i have this set up i got it one on the x 0 0.01 and 0 0.01 on the other two axes for the scale i'm going to add a component of a box collision around it and i'm going to scale it up just a little bit bigger than the box i'm going to make sure that my item itself I'm going to change its collision to nothing and I want to make sure my box still has overlap all dynamic so I'm going to compile that real quick and then I'm going to add another component of a projectile movement this is what will allow us to launch it when it spawns so with the projectile movement selected I'm going to go up to the top and under the projectile I'm going to set its initial speed and max speed both to 500 just for testing this will make it to where it travels fairly slow to begin with and I'm going to set its gravity scale to zero for now alright with that done now we need to tell it where to spawn so I'm going to go into the player blueprint I'm going to go into the viewport and I'm going to highlight my mesh so when you're adding certain components to your character like I'm about to add a scene component to tell the arrow where to fire or where to spawn from. So under the animation you can set the animation mode to use an asset or a custom mode. So an asset is basically you can pick any individual um, animation. So I'm going to find my fire animation, make it to where it's not playing, and then about there is where it's going to be launching that's the point in the animation I plan on spawning it so this will tell me exactly where I need to set my scene component to know where to spawn it at so I'm going to add do I have the mesh selected? yes All right. I'm going to add a scene component just like we did the attack trace I'm going to call this fire from instead of attack from and I'm going to position it just right there just in front of where the bow would be so we're about here something like that about where the bow would be and it'll spawn right here and then fire out uh, an easier way sometimes to position things if you click right here where it says perspective you can also get orthographic and it'll help you kind of line things up a little bit so I can do it right here and then from the front I can position it on her hand so this will let you change it from wireframe to lit or unlit and that's looking pretty good I'm gonna go back to the left yeah it's a good distance in front of it all right I'm gonna compile that I'm gonna change this back to perspective because it'll bug me otherwise so now we have where we're going to fire it from we can change our animation blueprint back to the use animation blueprint so that it goes back to what it's supposed to be so now with all that done we have our arrow we have the point that it's going to spawn from but we need to set up the animations to actually get her to that point so in my animation blueprint I'm going to go to my state machine and from the ranged combat we need a couple of more states so I have two 
animations for readying an arrow, one animation for readying an arrow, and then another one for actually firing it. So if I take a look, then you'll see she gets to that point, and then the next one is that. So in my animation blueprint, I'm going to set a state for ready, and then another one for fire, and then hook it right back into the ranged combat so that when it's over, it goes right back to where it's supposed to. So my this one we don't really need to do too much with. We do need to hook it up, but uh, the firing arrow is basically where we're going to do most of the like spawning the actual arrow and then resetting our ability to fire again. So let's go set up our God. I'll eat. I've got a lot of these. Hang on. Equip bow. Don't need that. Spawn gear. Don't need that. Get out of here. All right. Cleaned it up a little bit. So firing an arrow is actually going to be fairly simple as compared to this. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our attack system and I'm going to borrow all of this right here, our can attack and the check and all that. And I'm going to hook it to the ranged so that if we can attack, then we don't want them to be able to just continuously try to spam it and mess with the animation. So we'll do that right there. And then we will add another Boolean called fire arrow. At the end of this, oh, not get it. At the end of this, we'll just set it to true, and that'll pretty much that'll launch us into our animations that we need. So now in the player animation blueprint, I'll go to the event graph and grab that cast and hook it to my sequence because we need to go grab that boolean out. So from the player, I'm gonna say get fire arrow promote that to a variable called firing and then compile so back in the state machine we can say enter this when firing is true now when we're readying the arrow and firing the arrow I wanted to be able to do this while moving so in my drawing bow function I'm going to grab the layered blend per bone and the range blend space. I'm going to copy that with control C and move over into my ready. Paste it with control V, hook it up and hook my ready arrow into my blend pose. I'm going to make sure that that's not looping and if you're setting this up, if you're grabbing out another layered blend per bone by typing it out, don't forget that you need to set the actual bone that you're blending through. So I'm using the spine blend depth that's 5 on mine and then check this box, this box, and then normalize. Just very important to remember that. So in the fire I'm going to paste that one more time and hook my fire arrow to the blend pose. Make sure it is not looping and then I will compile again so that we can set up our transition rules here. So from my ready to fire, I'm going to get the ratio or the time remaining of my ready arrow animation. Find out if it's less than or equal to 0.01, and if it is, then it'll transfer over to this one. And for fire to range combat, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to get the ratio or the time remaining of the fire animation and find out if it's less than or equal to 0.01 also. Compile that and then we'll go into our fire animation and set some animation notifies so about right here is when I want my arrow to spawn so I'm gonna right, oh, right click and add a notify I'm gonna need a new one called shoot and then since we're using the can attack function from our uh, melee attack we can just use our existing is it resume attack? The one that... Yeah, resume attack, the one that sets can attack back to true. So I'll just hook my resume attack right there. Now there is one small alteration that we need to do to this animation notify in our event graph. Since we're using it for the ranged also, I need to drag off from the player ref and get the fire arrow boolean that we set up and set it back to false. Otherwise, once it goes back to here, it'll just cycle back through again and again and again. It's never telling it to stop. So that'll prevent that. So let's check it real quick.
and I can fire. It's not actually spawning the arrow yet, but she is going through the animations, which is exactly what she wants, and she's moving and doing it just right. So now we need to tell the blueprint or the character when to actually spawn the arrow. So I'm going to do this with a function, just like we do our attack trace. I'm going to add another one called fire arrow, firing arrow. So for this, we want to spawn an actor from class. We will be using our arrow info later on. For now, I'm just going to set up my wood arrow that we set up. I'm just going to hardwire that in. The spawn transform is going to be our fire from. But we're not going to just get its location and plug it in just like last, or get its transform. I want to get its world location. And from here, I'm going to want to make a transform. So the reason I'm doing it this way is because I want it to spawn at this point, but I want it to spawn and fire in the direction that the camera is facing. So that if we're aiming up, it'll fire up, or if we're aiming down, it fires down. So I'm going to get its forward vector No, 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 I'm going to get its rotation. I think it's the relative rotation, so we'll hook that up for now. That should be the right one. And then, it should be, for now, that's all we really need. So I'm going to go back to my player animation blueprint in the event graph, and I'm going to find my shoot notify. Copy my player reference and call that firing arrow function. Now we will be expanding on that a little bit further later on, but for now this should be good. So let's see. Oh, I guess it's not relative rotation. <laughs> Maybe it is world rotation. Yeah, that's looking like it. So now if I'm aiming down, <laughs> it's so slow. Let's speed it up. Let's go to my wood arrow. I'm going to adjust its projectile movement. Let's set it to like 5,000. So let's maximize this real quick. I actually got to equip my bow. Yeah, that's looking decent. And if I jump, can't fire. One last thing we can do real quick is let's adjust our HUD. So I'm going to go to my player HUD. And I'm going to drag out an image. And I'm going to anchor it directly to the center of the screen. And this is going to represent my aiming reticle, ret reticule, re my aim sights. <laughs> I'm going to set it to about 25 by 25, 0.5 and 0.5 on the alignment, and set its position back to zero so that it's right smack dab middle of the screen. That's probably, that's too big. All right, I'm going to go 15 by 15. 10 by 10. That's looking all right. So that'll be all right for now. But I want to set its visibility based on whether or not we have our bow drawn. So I'm going to create a binding for its visibility. Grab out our player reference and get the bow drawn boolean. Hooking a branch with B left click. If true, visible. If false, hidden. So, testing that out real quick. That's still kind of big. 
Oh, and that doesn't actually even line up. I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller though first. So I'm gonna set its size to like five by five. Compile that. And then in the world rotation, let's see, we can kind of mess with this, get relative rotation. Well, no, we tried the relative rotation, didn't we? All right. Um, I think it's because I have my camera offset. So let's see, let's see what we can do. To get world work, maybe we can get the forward vector and then we can just plug it into the rotation so it converts it from the X vector. Let's see how that works. Sometimes some things are just play around until you figure out what works really well. That's well, that's at least got the arrow spawning. I'll update. I'm going to try to keep this one short, so we'll end it here for now. And uh, I'll we'll do some aim fixing in a next video or so. So thanks for stopping by again. Sorry if I'm getting kind of rambly. I'm jacked up on coffee and tired. But I'm going to try to get some more of these out tonight. <laughs> so see you all in a bit.